Hey everybody, Steve Nacho Off-Road Technology again, back here in the Center for Off-Road Lighting World Domination. Today, we're gonna to talk about thermal management and how it applies to LEDs. Everybody thinks, oh, LEDs run so cool, I don't have to take care of them. Couldn't be more false. So before we get started, let's talk about some facts. First up, LEDs must stay cool. They can stay cool through a heat sink, airflow, a fan, there's billions and billions of LEDs in the world and they're all kept cool differently. How you design your heat sink is how well the light's gonna work. A hot heat sink is a good thing because not only do you need to have a good heat sink, you need to have good thermal coupling from where the LEDs are out to the metal and out to the heat sink because that's how you dissipate the heat out. We know that these lights are gonna be bashed off rocks, bounced off trees, you name it. Put it on an off-road vehicle, it's gonna see the worst of the worst. But we also designed it to get the heat out. If you notice, we're one of the only lights on the market that actually has fence from the front. And that's because the airflow comes from the front. Once you get the heat in the light, you still have to regulate it. The same computer that controls the active voltage monitoring also controls the thermal management system. And our thermal management system is really cool because we can tailor the derating curve. You always want the light to dim as it gets too hot. Let's say a blanket gets put over it, it gets caked with mud, stuff is gonna happen. So you want the light to protect itself. This is an investment. These lights are gonna last you for a lifetime. With the nacho thermal management system, we can dial in the exact temperature that the heat sink runs at. Doesn't matter if it's in cold air, warm air, underwater, you name it, it's going to run at the exact same temperature because we have that processor that monitors all these different inputs. So today, rather than let the internet show you this because no other manufacturers will ever actually show you the derating curve on their lights, we're gonna show you how well our lights work. So what we've got here, we've got a power supply, we've got a timer that we're gonna leave the camera running the whole time so there's no Hollywood magic here. Then we've got our switches to turn the lights on. Then we have a light. A Couple feet away, we've got our fan. Once the light gets heated up, we're gonna turn the fan on and we're gonna show you how fast it cools down and how well the Nacho thermal management system really works. A couple other things we got here. I've got an anemometer, so I can actually show you how fast the wind is over the light, and of course the thermometer, so we can show you how hot the temperature gets. All right, let's get this test going. I'm just gonna turn the light on to high, and we're gonna sit and we're gonna watch the timer. All right. At this point, it's time to go make yourself a big old plate of nachos. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. So now you can see the current start coming down. It's been about six minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep letting it come down until it's stabilized. The housing's getting a little warmer, but what this is, is this is the thermal management system ramping the light down to maintain a specific temperature. It takes about five minutes, zero airflow, where you're gonna get 100%. All right, there's some good nachos. After about 12 minutes, current draw is stabilized right at about three amps, 2.93 amps. So about 50% power is where this light's going to stabilize. Let's check our temperature. And here it's probably about 75 degrees. 75 degrees, it's nice inside. So now let's check the housing temperature. You shine this around, we're right about 140. Shine on point at the back and maybe get up to 145. So you can see nothing too hot. I can touch it. It's not going to burn you. And if the housing's at 150, that means your LEDs are going to be right in that same range, maybe 160. At this temperature, these lights are probably going to last 100,000 hours. Even if they last 50,000 hours, they're going to last longer than whatever they're bolted to. So you can put these on three cars, run three cars into the ground, and the lights are still going to last. 
So now let's watch how fast it speeds up. If you look over here, I've got a fan just out of the camera range. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and I've got my anemometer. And we are at, right about the light, we're about nine miles an hour, eight to nine miles an hour. Now, even my slow friends drive more than eight miles an hour. So at that point, we're just gonna let eight mile an hour, nine mile an hour wind blow over the light and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're at about 13 minutes when I turn it on and we're gonna watch how fast it comes back up with just a little bit of airflow. So at this point, I'm gonna go get myself a bowl of fried ice cream to go with the nachos I just pounded a couple minutes ago. We'll be back in about five minutes and we're gonna have a full power light again. Okay, we're back. It took about three minutes at eight miles an hour and the lights are back at 100%. And a lot of that's the thermal design of the housing. You've got fins from the front, so it's gonna capture all that air flowing from the front. If I turn the fan off, it's gonna be about the same thing. Now that the lights cool off, and I can show you this, we're sitting right about, and we're down to 120 degrees. So LEDs are happy, LEDs are running cool. The Nacho thermal management system is gonna keep it at full power as long as it can, and then it'll start ramping it down nice and smooth. You'll never see it with your eye. It's all controlled in software. As soon as you get a little bit of airflow, it's gonna come right back up and it's gonna maintain that full power output as long as possible.